Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Boy Scout Troop 350, for leading us in the flag season. The Manchester PTA proudly welcomes you to meet the candidates night, where you will have the opportunity to be introduced to the candidates running for the Manchester Township Board of Education. First, I would like to welcome everyone and thank you all for participating in this community event. My name is Lisa Mitchell. I'm the parent of three children. Two are Manchester High School graduates. One is in her junior year. I have served as the PT Secretary for the last five years, and I'm now serving as the Legislative Chair and Events Coordinator Chair. I, as well as the other Meet the Candidates Night Committee Chairs, Tracy Shadowall and Heather Kramer, hope you enjoy the evening. Our newly appointed PT President, Melissa Dadia, as well as our board member volunteers, Michelle DeSantis and Terry Mersensic, are here to assist you if necessary. The purpose of this event is to provide the residents and the community members with an opportunity to hear from candidates as they discuss issues of importance to them in a setting that promotes the inculcation of patriotism, civics, civic duty, and community involvement. The Manchester PTA's mission is to ensure the educational success of every child and make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. What better way to accomplish this mission than to gather together and make important choices such as choosing the members of our Board of Education? In the past, we have also included our town council candidates in our Meet the Candidates Night event, but we are proud to announce that all three, Mayor Palmer, Councilman Wallace, and Councilwoman Brush were all uncontested and will continue to work diligently for the Township of Manchester. Congratulations to all of them. There are six candidates running for the Board of Education. We thank you all for accepting our invitation. They are incumbents, President Donald Webster Jr. and Christopher Nolan. Unfortunately, Mr. Nolan is not able to attend. Candidates Sarita Dodd, Anthony S. Fulch, Brian H. Jenner, and Gail Mount. The questions and answers tonight were prepared in advance. Please understand that questions from our audience will not be taken this evening, as this is not a town hall style meeting. Approximately 25 questions were presented at our last PTA board meeting, all of which were given to us by community members, parents, and teachers, and have been used over the years for this event. The PTA board members were all requested to choose their top choices to ask the candidates for tonight's event. Each candidate was given the same seven questions chosen by the PTA board in advance to prepare for their presentation. They will each be given two to three minutes to introduce themselves and two minutes to answer five of the seven questions. The candidates' opening speech, closing remarks, and answers to all questions are to be free of accusatory and or disparaging remarks toward or against the other candidates. If such remarks are made, the candidate will forfeit his or her turn to speak, and the moderator will move on to the next candidate. The timekeeper will start the timer at the beginning of each candidate's response in order to be fair with the time allotment. This event is being filled, filmed, and photos will be taken by the MTS Secretary and PTA Board Member, Terry Marsinsic, as well as Mr. Staples, 
Video and photos will be posted on the PTA website and our social media. The timekeeper is high school teacher and MTA president, Mr. Dan Staples. The moderator for the evening will be regional day school teacher and PTA board member, Michelle DeSantis. So let us begin. Good evening. Please welcome our first candidate this evening, Board of Education President, Mr. Donald Webster, Jr. What is your ultimate goal upon taking office, and what would you bring to the school system that is positive? Um, are we answering the questions, or am I allowed to make an opening statement first? Oh, you can make an opening statement first. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Donald Webster, Jr., and I'm a candidate for the Board of Education. I'm a retired financial manager, manager with strong ethics and integrity, along with extensive budgeting and management skills. I hold bachelor's and master's degrees in accounting and business administration. I am a married 40-year resident of Manchester with three adult children who all graduated from the Manchester Township Public Schools. As an experienced school board leader with relatives who live in our local retirement communities, I am the candidate best qualified to address the complex financial and governmental issues of our unique community as they relate to our schools. I am committed to providing all of our community's children with a high quality educational experience at a reasonable cost to the taxpayers. I support curriculum changes at our high school and middle school that will address the ever-changing education and evolving post-high school employment needs of our students. I have been a proactive advocate who has met numerous times with our elected officials in order to fight for more equitable levels of both state and federal funding resources for our schools and our community. I believe Manchester needs an experienced school board leader at this pivotal time in order to deal with the recently announced loss of state aid funding over the next seven years, the mandatory requirement to provide preschool education programs to our children, and the major housing development that is being proposed in our community that could adversely impact both our schools and our taxpayers. I'd also like you to know that I served on the Governor's New Jersey School Security Task Force in 2015, and I've chaired state-level task forces focused on school security, student career education pathways, and the STEAM education needs of our students. I was also an adjunct faculty instructor of accounting and business administration courses for over 10 years at Ocean County College. Finally, I became the first Ocean County School Board member in over 50 years to be elected by the statewide membership to serve as president of the New Jersey School Boards Association during the period 2015 to 2017. I look forward to sharing my vision for our schools with you this evening. Thank you. What is your ultimate goal upon taking office, and what would you bring to the school system that is positive? Thank you for that question. My ultimate goal is to see that all of our children receive a high-quality educational experience in a safe and supportive environment. I also want them to have the opportunity and ability to explore possible career opportunities and, and acquire the necessary knowledge and skills while in our schools that will enable them to be successful in whatever they choose to do in life. Additionally, additionally, I am committed to seeing that all of our schools are well run and that our tax dollars are being spent wisely and effectively. I feel that I bring an informed perspective to the board along with a wealth of knowledge and experience related to school board operations and leadership. I also have a very good understanding of our state's current education issues and a knowledgeable perspective of the legislative environment in New Jersey, along with an appreciation for the aspirations of our parents for their children. All of this knowledge, experience, and understanding will ultimately be a positive benefit to our school system. What do you see as the top three educational issues that our board must address? top three educational issues that the board must address include focusing on student academic achievement and making sure that we have the proper programs and academic supports in place in order to help all of our students to be successful. Providing greater emphasis and a renewed focus on the needs of our career-oriented student learners 
in order to ensure that they have the opportunity while in our schools to explore possible career paths and develop the necessary skills, hands-on tra hands training, work experience, certifications and licenses that employees are looking for, that employers are looking for. And for, finally, the board is going to need to address, evaluate, and plan for the impacts on our school and community related to the recent legislative reduction of state aid funding over the next seven years. Coupled with a state mandate to provide preschool education programs for our students and the extensive proposed housing development in our community that could have a very serious consequence for both our schools and our community. These will all be very significant education related challenges and issues that the board will face in the coming years that we need to address and begin planning for at this time. What should the board do to gain community support for referendums that our district needs? As the board identifies the need for a referendum, it needs to be able to clearly and honestly define and articulate the reasons for the planned project, outline the scope of the work, calculate the estimated cost to complete the project, identify any potential funding offsets, and portray the impact on local taxpayers. Once this has been done, the board will need to develop an effective communication plan that presents this information to the public in an understandable and compelling manner. Strategy should include the use of social media, public presentations at board meetings, PAC meetings, and back to school nights, and interviews with local print and radio media. The board also needs to be willing to take their message out to the public. And what I mean by that is that the board needs to be willing to go out into our community whenever and wherever they can in order to spread the message about the needs of our schools and honestly answer the questions our residents may have concerning the proposed referendum and its impact on the community. What changes, if any, do you hope to bring about? I hope to bring about a renewed focus and emphasis on the needs of our career-oriented student learners. These are the students who may not be ready to go on to college immediately after high school, or may be unsure of what career path they want to pursue. But they, and all students for that matter, need the opportunity while in our schools to be able to explore various career paths and obtain the necessary skills and hands-on learning experiences that will prepare them for careers and jobs after graduation that don't necessarily require a college degree. Admittedly, as a society, we've been emphasizing that everyone needs to go to college, but I think increasingly we've come to realize that not everyone wants or needs to go to college in order to be successful. We also hear about the negative impact that the accumulation of large amounts of post-secondary education debt is having on our students' lives for the long term. And employers are also telling us that there are many good paying middle income and technical jobs that are going unfilled simply because our students don't have the knowledge and skills needed to meet the new and challenging uh, demands of the workplace. So I'd like to see us pursue actions such as increasing our focus on the development of soft skills, such as working, coming to work consistently, being punctual, using effective communication techniques, and the value of work in order to achieve success and the addition of more career and technical education courses in our high school. I'd also like to see the creation of internships, the awarding of technical certifications and licenses while still in high school, and the development of employer school-based apprenticeship programs in order to address this important issue. And the final question is, as a Board of Education member, you are not receiving any financial compensation. What then is your motivation for running for this office? Uh, my initial motivation for running for this office, like many parents, was my concern about the education of my children and our community's children. This concern was further magnified by the dysfunction of the Board of Education and this school district at the time I was first elected. After I was elected, my motivation morphed into the challenge of working with my fellow school board members and the new administration in order to bring about the positive changes that were so badly needed in our school district. Slowly but surely, the district has made steady progress in the years that I have been on the board on various fronts, including academic performance, course offerings, facility improvements, 
our services to our students, and our class sizes. All of this has helped to provide both a sense of collective accomplishment, but also pride in our schools. These were my primary motivation, motivations for running for the board and for public office. And I continue to have a passion for seeing that we, as a community, continue to provide a high quality educational experience for all of our children at a reasonable cost to the taxpayers. I have a closing statement, if that's okay. I feel this election comes at a critical time for Manchester, and I believe that I'm the most qualified and best candidate for the position. As I said during my opening remarks, Manchester needs a knowledgeable and experienced school board leader in order to help us navigate through what I expect will be a very challenging time for our schools and our community. I would ask the voters to seriously consider my education, commitment to and knowledge of our schools and community, along with my experience as a school board leader, especially with the critical challenges that the board will be facing in the next few years when they go to the polls. Thank you to the PTA for providing this opportunity to address my qualifications and views on the issues facing our schools and communities. Thank you. We want to thank Mr. Webster for his time and wish you luck in the election. We'd like to please welcome our next candidate, Sarita Dodd. What is your ultimate goal upon taking office, and what would you bring to the school system that is positive?
curriculum is superior. I would like to take those academics and use them to translate into real world practice. It is wonderful to know the calculus to build a bridge. It is a totally different thing to actually build that bridge. And I would love for our district to move towards more real world practice. We also have to work on those soft skills, honesty, integrity, and loyalty. These are the things that they will take into their working world. I would like to bring that child-centered perspective. By child-centered perspective, what I mean is we look at the child from the inside and we go out. As opposed to the mandates that we have to have, and then we impose those mandates and attempt to then fit the child in. I would like us to focus on the child and work our way out, and that way we'll meet those mandates, and I hope and believe we will exceed them. I bring a willingness to roll up my sleeves and get to work. Every position I have ever been in, every volunteer position, every work position, I have no problem rolling up my sleeves and getting to work and getting things done, and I have always gotten things done. I'm reasonably familiar with the educational system. I've been here for 20 some years and worked with teachers, paraprofessionals, neighbors, the superintendent, and the board of ed. I've established relationships with all of these people. And I love them all. <clears throat> Thank you. What do you see as the top three educational issues that our board must address? I see the top three educational issues that we have, that we should address, being one, matching children with teachers that they would learn best from. I know this is logistically challenging, but I also know that when we place a child with a teacher that has the style in which they learn, they thrive. And I think our children are worth that. Again, I would like to see our education translate into real world knowledge. Take what we've learned in that classroom and show how it applies to the real world. It becomes everlasting education. Lastly, climate. Not just the student to student climate or the parent to teacher, but the teacher to student and the administration <coughs> to staff. Communication is a very important key in there. We want our students to be college and career ready in their communication. We want them to have a sense of self-worth, knowing that they are brilliant children, no matter where they're classified, and for them to value others. And finally, conflict resolution. A lot of our students, as they grow older, aren't necessarily familiar with lots of different types of conflict. We need to help them with those challenges because they're going to face them in the real world. What should the board do to gain community support for referendums that our district needs? I feel that the district has done a fantastic job with the referendums thus far. The last two referendums have passed and they have utilized the information used and gain to do that. One, they utilize the organizations that are in communication with parents to know the concerns of the parents and take those concerns into consideration when building referendum. The PTA was instrumental in that portion as one of those organizations. They must continue to use organizations that are familiar with the needs and wants of parents when building a referendum package. They have to get the word out. Today, social media allows you to get the word out in many different ways. And they also must provide the information on that referendum. What is needed and why. Not just that it is needed, but actually the critical reasons why it's needed. Get rid of any fluff that's not necessary. Again, the PTA is always instrumental in making sure that that happens. These are the things that I think the community needs in support of the referendum. Therefore, the Board of Ed should provide.
What changes, if any, do you hope to bring about? As a Board of Education member, you are not receiving any financial compensation. What then is your motivation for running for this office? We'd like to thank Mrs. Dodd for her time, and we wish you luck in the upcoming election. Please welcome our next candidate, Anthony S. Gulch. Important it is. 
is for you to be there, and I don't want you to miss it. So, um, to my family, I want to thank you for being here and supporting me, and happy birthday to Sylph. So really quickly, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Tony Gulch. I had the privilege of growing up here in Manchester and graduating class in 1998. Uh, my wife, Morgan, also grew up here in Manchester. My in-laws, aunts, uncles, cousins, many of which are in the room tonight, um, still live here as well. My wife and I have been married for 13 years. We have five children here, uh, two in the middle school and three at MTS. While I was here, I played baseball and basketball. Uh, unlike my kids who are a lot smarter than I was, I worked my tail off to get A's and B's here. Uh, after high school, I attended Bloomsburg University where I played baseball. During my college years, I began working for a family French jewelry store in Robinson, New Jersey, and I worked for them for 13 years before they retired in 2014. Uh, that's when I opened my own store in Robinson called The Golden Goose. Over the past 18 years that I've been in business, I've had the privilege of having clients such as Bruce and Patty Springsteen, John and Dorothy Bon Jovi. I've done birthday gifts for President Bush and George Steinbrenner, and I designed cufflinks for all 30 NBA owners for the NBA teams. Um, in June of this year, I was asked by our superintendent who's here today, David Trethaway, to represent my class of 2018 to speak to this year's senior class. The idea was to show them that there are many paths to take in life, but most importantly to show that Manchester schools can produce some very interesting and successful people. I was honored to be asked to be a part of such a great event, but as I sat in this very room, I looked at some of those seniors, and all I could think about was, are we doing the absolute best that we can for our kids here in Manchester? Is there something that I can do or be involved in to ensure that each and every kid in our district has, has the best opportunity to be successful? That's why I'm running for a seat on the School Board of Education, because I feel that with my business background, my love for this town, and I want not only for my five kids, but all of our kids here in Manchester to have the very best that Manchester has, because we owe it to them. What is your ultimate goal upon taking office, and what would you bring to the school system that is positive? So my goal is to work with the other board members to make sure that we are providing what the students need to be successful in and out of the classroom. We need to improve the communication between the school board and the teachers so that we can better understand what the teachers and administrators need at the school level. I've asked many administrators in our district how many times that a board member has been to the school during the day. To my surprise, the answer was never. To me, that's like owning my jewelry store and never going, to, going in to see how things are running. We need to be, as a board, be more involved. The schools need to see us there so that they know that we care about them and that we're more approachable. Being a business owner, it makes you be well-rounded. Makes you be a person that you, you have to be able to manage your time, use your resources, and most importantly, manage your money and costs. As a board, let's be more open to the teachers and the parents, and let's cut things that aren't working and improve the programs and put some money to the things that will work. What do you see as the top three educational issues that our board must address? So this was an interesting question because there's a lot of angles to, to go at here, but the three that I think are really important, the number one thing is I think the teacher's contract. Teachers are again working without one. This is number one on my list for a reason. Without the teachers, our kids don't learn, period. And it stops there. The board needs to open the lines of communication with the union and come to an agreement. Just like with any negotiation, it will be pulling from both ends and some tough conversations and things that both sides feel strongly for, but we need to do our absolute best to get this done. Number two, school safety. I've often thought about how when we were kids we had fire drills and things like that, but we would never in a million years thought that someone would bring a gun into one of these schools and shoot their peers and their teachers. But here we are, and although Manchester puts, has put some security procedures in place, more needs to be done. I have thought about other towns, like other towns did, with adding class three and class two officers to each school, but of course that comes with a price tag. But another great idea that we can put into place, just like I have at my jewelry store, would be a camera system that would have live feed right to the Manchester Police Department. 
This could act as yet another deterrent and also allow the police officers to better understand the situation happening so they will be better prepared when arriving. Number three, school budget. This, will, this is always an, be an important topic and issue with any school district. This is where communication is huge. I have heard many times how brand new textbooks are being thrown away only to be purchased again the following year because it wasn't communicated that we already had them. I'm sure there are many more scenarios where there is unnecessary waste, and if that happens in each school just a few times in a school year, at the end of the year, that makes a huge difference. We need to see what school programs are being attended and what has interest from our students and what programs don't. We have to trim what we can and be more streamlined so that our dollars are going to things that will improve our kids and their experiences here in Manchester. What should the board do to gain community support for referendums that our district needs? So if we demonstrate a need to the citizens, including the senior citizens, to have our outreach to explain what the needs are, would go a very long way in getting support we need. The last time Manchester had a referendum, it was approved, and I feel that again, with open lines of communication between the school board and the community leaders, things can be worked in a very positive direction. What changes, if any, do you hope to bring about? I believe that the school board does some really good things currently. But as a parent of five kids in our district, there are some things that I feel can be improved. I would like to look into why it's taking so long for, to get kids basic skills. I know with three of my kids in kindergarten, and three of my kids, the kindergarten teachers notice some things like letter reversal and forms of dyslexia. Unfortunately, we've had to wait until the second grade for them to be eligible and to be tested and placed to basic skills. That's two years of wasted time. We need to be better at understanding the signs that a child is having difficulty and get on it ASAP so we can get them started in a program like Wilson or other programs that are structured to help the kids. But we need to recognize it early and be willing to do something about it. Another thing I'd like to change is the way the basic skills teachers communicate with one another. If you take my daughter Sophia, for example, she went from MTS last year to the middle school this year. Before she left, I asked her reading teacher how the reading program was and how the teacher was in sixth grade. Her response to me, I don't know them so well. I understand that those teachers don't work in the same building, but there needs to be communication between them so the teacher my daughter had in prior years can communicate and tell her new teacher the things that she may do well with and things she has difficulties with. Let's make it easier on our students and our teachers. We need everyone to work with each other. And the final question. As a Board of Education member, you are not receiving any financial compensation. What then is your motivation for running for this office? To my knowledge, I may be the only candidate that be, that's running that both my wife and myself are lifelong residents of Manchester. We both grew up here in the schools. So not only is it very important to me to see my district where I went to school be successful, but I have five children of my own that are here in Manchester schools. We want to give back to the community. I have major concerns about the budget and the programs that have been mentioned to be eliminated. I want to work towards a better Manchester School District that's about putting our kids in community first. At this time, we can give a closing statement. So in closing, um, in 2001, my wife and I um, moved to Tom's River and we started our family there. As our family grew, we talked about moving and where we would move to. After deciding where we were going to move, a school district where our kids would go to school was major important to us. We decided that going home back to Manchester was where we wanted to be. It was a major selling point for us. And the one thing that we wanted to be was home. And I know with my business background and my ability to communicate, I can help the school board and make this town and bring everyone together and really help these kids out a lot. And that was really my main concern for running for this. A lot of people were asking me what you're running for. 
You know, they, people say it's a lot of work and you're not getting paid and all these other things. And the more I keep thinking about it, it's, you know, we have to make this better. It's got to be better. I see the lack of communication. Um, having the five kids in the school district, I really see some of the things that can be improved. And uh, like I said, my wife and I just feel very strongly about um, our kids here. And we want to be residents here a long time. And um, that's it. We thank Mr. Gold's first time, and we wish you luck in upcoming years. We'd like to now welcome our next candidate, Gail Mount. as the top three educational issues that our board must address. The top three educational issues I feel our board must address is proper programming for all students, better vocational trade school awareness, and more elective options to help our kids reach graduation requirements. 
Not all students are placed where their academic and social emotional needs are going to best be met. I want to work with administration to ensure that kids are where they need to be, not only for their own personal growth, but also for the personal growth of their classmates. When one child constantly impedes the learning environment, all students suffer. Sometimes the regular education or special ed classroom is not what is best for all learners. We need to offer other options besides out of district placement for these students. Not all students have plans to head to college after high school. I feel there are so many awesome programs offered at the vocational school. I do not feel that all students and parents are made aware of what is available, and I think better exposure to these programs is crucial. There are so many trades one can learn to create a successful life for him or herself. Graduation requirements are always changing. New electives have been added over the years to offer our students more variety, and I would like to see this continue. I think a variety of electives that allow kids to meet their graduation requirements will offer more productive, happy, and eager to learn students. What should the board do to gain community support for referendums that our district needs? changes, if any, do you hope to bring about? I want to see many changes brought to the district. My three main goals would be to implement BB programs in dyslexia awareness and programming, improve security and educational resources for those impacted with substance abuse. I also want to see more community involvement and better communication between the Board of Ed, administration, teachers, and the community. Things are harder to fix when people don't work together. I want to encourage everyone to work together to improve and implement different programs. Education is not a one-man job. It takes many people working together to ensure success. Not too many people come out to the Board of Education meetings each month. We need to start encouraging the community to come out and support and to question things. When people question things, then things change and get done. We need to improve staff morale because when the teachers are happy, going to work, and feeling supported, they will better educate our children. And the final question. As a Board of Education member, you are not receiving any financial compensation. What then is your motivation for running for this office? My three children, Allie, Avery, and Charlie, are my biggest motivation for running. I want to be sure that my children, as well as the rest of the children of our Manchester community, receive the best education possible. I feel that the best way to ensure that that happens is to become involved. As a board member, I can voice my opinion and vote to approve and disapprove programs. I also feel that I have a lot of great ideas to help improve things that can be brought to the table to provide a better educational system for our children. I'm a very outgoing person who enjoys working with others. I have great interpersonal skills and I like to make things happen. Our society has changed so much since the days I was in school, and I can honestly feel like I'm still in the loop as an educator. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful tool to change the world. I want to be one of the tools that helps our children succeed. At this time, you can give a closing statement. Again, I would like to thank everyone for coming out and for your support. And a special thanks to the PTA and MTEA for sponsoring this event. I would like to start my closing with a quote by Chef Heiken. Recognize that every interaction you have is an opportunity to make a positive impact on others. I consider myself to be a kind, hardworking, and positive person. I hope the community sees and believes in my potential to be a great leader for our community. I want to work with others, share ideas, and get great things done. I am truly invested in, educa in education as a special educator and mom of three. I want to ensure that our children in our community get the best. I want to make sure they have the tools and skills they need to create extraordinary futures.
futures for not just themselves, but also for our future generations. I want to see the great programs we have expand even more. I want to work with outside agencies to help provide better support systems for our students, staff, and support staff. The Manchester School District believes in excellence by example. I want to be a part of the excellence and lead by example. When you go to the polls in November, remember, you can count on math. Gail Math, number four, for Manchester Board of Education. We want to thank Mrs. Mount for her time, and we wish you luck in the upcoming election. Please welcome our next candidate, Brian H. Jenner. students are given opportunities and programs that will best allow them to think critically, 
develop and foster their creativity, learn to work collaboratively, and become better prepared in the areas of communication, information, media, and technological literacy. These are all 21st century skills that are needed to be successful in society today. What do you see as the top three educational issues that our board must address? Well, first, we must make sure that class sizes remain manageable and allow all students to be active participants in class, not just passive bystanders. This is especially critical in the early elementary years when young children are more curious and require more individualized attention. Second is funding, especially for mandated services in special education. Special needs students must be placed in the least restrictive environment, but funding has not kept pace with these needs. We must repair the current funding formula, and underfunding must be addressed. Third, we must address the common four state standards and the current exam, which is known as PARC. Curriculum and instruction is being developed based on the results of this exam, as well as teacher evaluations. But as numerous researchers have expressed, when we look back at Common Core, it's going to be considered an absolute flop. Students must be tasked at being strategic and creative thinkers. Again, essential 21st century skills, and I will continue to speak out against Common Core and act to address this. What should the board do to gain community support for referendums that our district needs? Richard Peckham in 2013 developed a comprehensive list of proven strategies for passing school referendums. So I took those and applied them here. First, we must develop trust. This takes time to develop, but developing trust among our community is paramount in passing a referendum. Second is strategic planning. There must be community input and communication is key. We cannot surprise our community, but we must communicate need, how it will be funded, and the impact on the tax base. In Manchester, our community is heavily impacted on what will it cost me in the long run. Third, we must develop a compelling need story. The community must, uh, need must be articulated, and a compelling need story, excuse me. The community need must be articulated, and their ideas accepted and we must convince the community of the enhancement of the educational mission or program. And we must remember that we should only present one bond referendum at a time. Fourth, gain an understanding of the stakeholders. What are the benefits? Fifth, we must develop a citizens committee so as to best communicate and to sell the project to the community. Meetings in the various clubhouses to involve the community and develop a comprehensive package to present to all. Six is we must have continuous public engagement. The public must be informed and must understand the project. Seventh, we must work getting out the vote. We must remember that a public that is well informed on the need of the project will tend to be more supportive. Address concerns of the referendum in a direct, candid, and honest way. Eighth is to avoid a slick campaign. We must be honest, direct, and need-driven in our presentation. Ninth, we have to make it personal. Social media is essential in communicating the referendum proposal and the needs and benefits. I would be out meeting with the public to demonstrate those needs and benefits as well. And finally, 10, after the vote, explore the exit polling, develop strategies for any additional referendums that didn't work, and communicate those that have worked. What changes, if any, do you hope to bring about? This is easy. Community engagement. I've attended numerous board meetings in the last few years have noticed that many times I'm the only one there who is not employed by the district or currently sitting on the board. While the members of the board are representatives of the community, I feel that we need to find ways to engage more of our general public on what is happening in the schools. Maybe rotate the location of board meetings to places other than just Ridgeway School. I've seen districts move their board meetings around to all their schools. We have three elementary schools, a middle school, a high school, and a regional day school. Let's explore moving the meetings around the district. While public notices, um, sorry, while public notices are posted and it is on the district website, we must find outlets to promote the board meetings. A perfect example is meetings I've attended where Eagle Scouts have been recognized. Our teachers and educational support personnel have been honored, etc. We should have more community engagement. There weren't enough people there to see these things. Maybe even explore video broadcasts like many districts do. I also hope to bring about ideas to enrich our educational programs even further. As
As already mentioned, engaging our students in critical thinking and other 21st century skills, as well as supporting our district in any initiatives that will enhance student learning. Finally, I hope to bring about an initiative in experiential education, where students can learn through observation and engagement in real world settings, looking at the practical application of their education and to further develop our commitment to STEAM education. And our final question. As a Board of Education member, you are not receiving any financial compensation. What then is your motivation for running for this office? My motivation is the satisfaction that, as I have done in all the years I was in the classroom, I can make a difference. In all the ways I have previously described, I know that I can help make the Manchester Township Public Schools the standard to which other districts are compared. We should be the leaders in all areas, from pre-K through grade 12. We need to continue to provide a full and comprehensive educational program to our students while addressing the diverse and essential needs of our population. We must work to keep our schools safe and positive learning environments for our children, and we must be able to attract and keep the best and brightest educators available to our students. The Board of Education must be the support base to enact and provide the very best for our community. We must be aware of the fiscal responsibilities we have, but we must also be the voice that supports our district and the initiatives we put forth, which are in the best interest of all our constituents. I'll give a closing statement at this time. Thank you. I would like to I'd like to thank the Manchester PTA for hosting tonight's forum, the Manchester Township Education Association for, for providing refreshments and providing voter registration cards, which if you haven't filled out, please do. And I would like to thank my fellow candidates for their participation this evening. I feel I have the qualifications to serve on this board as I've dedicated my entire adult life to education. Having worked with over 5,000 students in the last 33 years, I know the importance of having a strong and supportive board. One of the most important things in the life of any community is its schools. We in Manchester need to provide the very best educational programs for our children. We need to provide a safe and secure learning environment. And we need to prepare our students for a life in the 21st century, whereupon they are creative, innovative, critical thinkers, and can work collaboratively in the exploration of their curiosity. We must be fiscally responsible by adhering to the most efficient and thorough budget and we must explore alternative financing solutions so as to not overburden our residents with exorbitant school taxes. We should continue to explore the opportunity to share additional resources with our neighbors, and we should support our educators who are entrusted with instructing the children of our community. While every candidate tonight wants what's best for our school district, I feel you should look at the people who will best represent your interests and the interests of our district over the next three years and those that have the experience in the area of education and educational programs. I thank you for your interest and attention this evening and for the opportunity to serve you as a member of the Manchester Township Board of Education. Both line to Brian Jack. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Denner for his time and we wish you luck in the upcoming election. Thank you. so much to the candidates this evening for sharing your views and for definitely having the best interests of our students at heart. The PTA would like to thank the candidates for participating in the event tonight and we also wish you best of luck in the upcoming election. Also, thank you to our superintendent, Mr. David Trethaway, for supporting the PTA and allowing us to provide such wonderful programs for the school and community events. Thank you so much to the Manchester Township Education Association for supporting the PTA and providing refreshments and snacks in the back. Uh, they also have voter registration cards and mail-in ballots. If you're interested, please stop by. Thank you so much again to Boy Scout Troop 350 for leading us in the flag salute. Thank you to Principal Adams for allowing us to utilize the auditorium and for the high school, uh, to the high school custodial staff who worked so hard helping us prepare. And of course, thank you to the community whose main intention tonight was to become more informed voters. We hope that you all enjoyed the evening and please
please stop by the MTA table to complete a voter, voter registration card and the PTA table to see pictures of events that we have provided in the past. Please support the PTA by becoming a PTA member. Thank you everyone and remember to vote on Tuesday, November 6th.